Hey gang, welcome back to Joe Daddy's Garage. Today's video is part 16 in the Cobra Jet series. Previously known as the Crunchy Cobra Jet, now we're calling it Slither. So Crunchy is dead. I cut it up in the last video, it's gone, and now we're working on the Slither project. As you know, I've already dissected that bulk of the car, and I am putting together pieces from Dynacorn and parts of the original car as well. So I'm going to show you some of the stuff that needs to happen, but this video may have some time lapse in it, and I plan to work on getting the side of the car for the driver's side together, and also do some repair work on various parts. So let's take a look at what we have to work on. So of course this is the driver's side quarter panel, and in talking with the owner he wanted me to try to do what I could to save the B pillar and I have removed it. It took a good bit of effort to get this out and there is some repair work that's going to have to happen down in this lower corner. Uh, what I ended up doing was drilling out a bunch of spot welds and part of that plan was to somewhat separate this inner structure from the outer because there was rust in between and I, I may still take all of this apart because I want to make sure this isn't going to rust back. And the only way to do that is probably to expose all of it. So at that point, at this point, there's the B pillar. This is part of the inner structure that went behind that. This was actually attached back here. So I had to again separate all of that to uh, expose the rusted areas. You can see just a, you know, a little bit of paint right there did wonders for preserving that part of it. I also removed the striker and I want to show you this because a lot of people um, they do the striker and then they worry about you know shimming it and this one happens to have two shims that was put in from the factory. I also had to drill out the center of the uh, screws, machine screws, uh, to get them loose from the mount point. It was not coming loose at all. So as with the other side, I plan to eliminate probably, I don't know how much, how far I'm going to come up yet, uh, eliminate bad metal from the driver's side quarter panel. And also we're going to look at how far we need to come down, what we can save, and you know, as I showed with the other uh, quarter panel in the previous video. Another thing I want to show you, you know, I talked about saving these little mount tabs and you know hardware and all that sort of thing what I found is that on the Dynacorn side panel those two screw holes are the same as these two screw holes and if I look at the piece that I sectioned out here it has these brackets on it and there are some other holes or some up there there's a couple of holes there where some headliner or trim went in. If I remove this, there are the holes. So there's these down here, these two here, which are the same as this one, and then there is a hole in this little triangle, which is also here, and there is the clip that would go into that hole. So I think that Dynacorn has done a pretty good job of replicating that piece and creating what would be the mount holes uh, for those pieces. So let's move on to the rocker panel. Now, as I worked on the passenger side, I pointed out that I had to do some repair work uh, in this forward section. And this one is actually a, in a little bit worse condition than the passenger side. So I'm gonna have to you know repair that section but in the back here I've got some really really bad deep rust and I'm missing this corner that goes around the wheelhouse so the plan is I'm going to salvage those pieces out of that Dynacorn rocker panel that we're not using uh, it just makes more sense to cut that off and merge the two together and have a nice solid piece instead of trying to make multiple patches. You know, part of this has that air vent down here at the bottom, or drain. Uh, this has some dents in it as well, where it was beat up. So I'll just make it better 
by sectioning in that piece and then making a patch out of this front section. I know everybody is uh, has their opinion on how we're doing this, but uh, I'm doing it according to what the owner wants, and that's all that matters at this point. So, um, again, I'll be working on getting that uh, the jig and everything forward, and trying to merge everything back together. Uh, maybe a time lapse for the most part. You've already seen me do it on the passenger side, so we'll see how it goes. So if you watched the time lapse, you saw where I had set the side on and then I was doing a bunch of adjusting. What I found was this corner right here, I had to trim out a little piece of metal which is laying right down there on the floor because this panel was too far back. On that side, it has a little bit of an over extension there on top and this side, it was just a bit off. And what I was measuring was a distance from the B-pillar mount location, basically right here, to the forward edge of the inner rocker panel. So this side was showing that it was too far back. So I needed to move it forward, and in order to do that, I notched this. Now, here's the thing. This setup, the way these are made, they've got this notch right here, which is almost dead on, and this notch as well, which is almost dead on. Those may or may not line up perfectly every time. And I'm not too worried about that. I'm more worried about getting the measurements correct for and aft. Also, when I had put in the inner wheelhouse, and as I set this one up, I was able to line everything up and get the screws in just as I did on the passenger side. So I'm comfortable with where that is sitting right now. I feel like it's in the right location and everything looks to line up uh, even from side to side. Also, I had done a measurement before on the passenger side, basically from this edge right here to the top of the rocker panel. Now, I have not um, done anything but mount this up here, so if I take this, set it on the edge of the rocker panel, and if I can do this with one hand, bring it up. Basically, I'm right now within about a sixteenth of an inch of 61. There it is, sorry. Um, so I'm very close, and this will move. This is not locked in by any means. So this whole, this whole side is still loose, and I'm happy with where all those measurements are. So now what I need to do is put in my bracing, like I had done on the passenger side, because I'm going to separate the rocker panel from these pieces. So I don't want anything to flex. I'll put that bracing in, take this off, and then remove the rocker panel.
Okay, so I have the Dynacorn piece removed from the side of the car, and of course the original piece sitting here. I want to remove a good piece of this original panel because it is so rough and rusty, and this piece will make a perfect candidate. Now, in order to do that, what I have determined, just to make a reference point, let's say, I've got a good corner here, even though there's nothing around the bottom side, I've got a good corner to reference. So I can come forward and just pick a point. In this case, I'm about 14 and a half inches, eliminates almost all of this bad stuff on the inside and outside. So I can make a reference right there. I've got 14 and a half. And now what I wanna do is make a second reference. So I take a piece of tape and I'm gonna come out here somewhere, just a arbitrary length, doesn't really matter. And I measure again, and let's say we have an 18 and a half reference. What that gives me is a datum point that I can go back to. So if I mark that, if I can, if I can make the tape measure stay in place while I'm trying to do this, um, there's an 18 and a half, okay? Now, when I cut this off, I have a, a length that I can go back to. So I can come up here, and if I cut this one, so I'm looking at 14 and a half, I'm gonna cut this one probably at 14 and three quarters. I know I could try to go dead on, but I'm not gonna gain anything by, you know, if I mess up, I cut it too short, then I'm in trouble. So again, we're around 14 and a half, roughly. And my, my datum line location is 18 and a half. So what I need to do is create a straight line. And that can be a challenge on anything like this because you're on a curve and there's really nothing easy to measure to. So I'm gonna use a, uh, a square. So if I come on top of this, I may have to remove that to make it work easier. Um, those, those need to come off anyway. So give me just a second. Okay, so this will give me a line that I can reference.
tricky part is I don't want to cut through this reinforcement piece. Now what I'll have to do is drill out the welds that hold that reinforcement piece on. You can see them there. I don't know if there's any, might be one on top, but those will have to come out. Well, I made an extra one. <laughs> I didn't need to well to drill that one. <laughs> There we go. Get that one loose. Ta-da! You can see how deep, hopefully you can see, I don't know where I'm looking, uh, but you can see how deep all these, all the rust was. So, yeah, I don't want to go any, any further. I'm, I'm gonna have to treat that inside um, and then later on put in the rust encapsulator, but I'll probably use the navel jelly while I'm here to get that taken care of. The next part of this, obviously, 
for the next part of this repair, we'll be getting this piece apart. So again, similar situation. Uh, if I took this one, I've already measured, you know, I've got this a little bit long right here. So I'll do the same thing. Cut that off. And then go to kind of a test fit mode after I take care of that rust. So there's my next cut line. But um, I'm not ready for that. I'm going to take care of the inside of this. I've shown it before. I'm going to take navel jelly and put inside there and treat this and then rinse it all out. And uh, also do a little more prep on these, any kind of hole repair that I may need to smooth these out a little bit. But um, yeah, we're getting there. Okay, so I have treated this area. Um, I may do another round because I can still see some discoloration. I want to see it all black, but at this point, that's where it's at. Uh, I did cut off the other piece off of the um, Dynacorn panel. And if I set this up in place, I have my measurement that I want, which is 18 and a half. So I'm right on the money there. And I do see a little bit of difference in the shape of this. I know it's not gonna be that critical because uh, what I'll have to do, if you look down here, you can see there's a gap right now, but I can manipulate this. And what I mean by that is I'm gonna start probably up here on this top edge and move this piece as necessary to make it do what I want. And by the time I get down to this bottom edge, I can roll that under and make it match. So part of that process is like I can take this straight edge and set it up here and verify my, my uh, tolerance, let's say, <laughs> how, how close it is. And right there you can see it's, it's on the same plane. So if I start up here, and either I can work my way to the other side or I can come back this way as well. I can, I can bend it around. Um, if I try to push it into place, it does line up here, but it changes the angle up here. You can see it, it does that. And the, the difficulty is when you have a piece that's all bent like this, you can't just reshape it by hand or hammer and dolly it. You're further ahead anchoring something down with the welder and then moving pieces of it to make it match. So I'm pretty happy with how all that looks. There is a little bit of a difference up here. If you'll notice, this trough gets wider on this piece. Now, is that gonna matter? Probably not, because this area is all behind the B-pillar. So all that's gonna be covered up. Now I could come back later on and reshape this or even cut this off and move it inboard to make it match. I'm more concerned right now with these um, angles, let's say, and making sure that they line up more than anything else. So once I uh, retreat this inside once again, I'm gonna come back and probably start welding things up and get it solid. You know, I must say that it's nice to have this material to work with. You know, even though we're cutting up a Dynacorn rocker panel, it would be very hard to replicate this kind of patch. Now, I know that a lot of people get concerned with welding something like this together because you want it to be straight and square. So when I start welding this stuff, I do take a scale or a straight edge and I make sure I start off with it square. If you do find a mistake, or you do find that it's going a little out of kilter, then stop. You can cut this loose and start over. Just so your measurements are correct and you take your time, you'll end up with good results. Well, that went very well. I'm happy with how this 
fits. There's a little bit of deflection right here from the welding, but that's very minor. Uh, skim coat of body filler will take care of that. On the back side here, this is more of a concern. So we've all probably heard that the Dynacorn panels are wider for some reason in this area, and this proves that. So everything else is lined up very nicely. And then as you come down into the bottom of this channel, this is offset. So what that means is I'm going to have to modify this flange. Now, a lot of people have had to do this on these Dynacorn rocker panels. Uh, the, my plan is going to be cutting inside of this corner and I will clamp this onto the floor pan and make this piece fit and weld it back to the Dynacorn piece. So if you don't do that, that's going to push everything out based on that dimension right there and that's going to make everything crooked. So that's the plan and uh, we'll see how that goes. So I welded the flange back together. It's all good and solid now. Lines up great with the inner rocker panel. And what I need to do next is fix up this part, portion of <coughs> So this is fully welded now and it lines up great with the inner rocker panel. And what I need to do next is fix up this portion of the rocker panel. And what I'm going to do is cut out a piece here that you can see outlined. And I'm not too worried about it being exactly the right dimension at this point. I just need kind of a, a bigger piece than what I really need. And then I can place it on top of this one, trim everything down, and make things line up. I do plan to keep this dip right here. And, you know, this isn't quite as pronounced. But this I, I trust more uh, whenever it comes to putting the inner piece in. As we know, this piece comes with this, what would be the inner portion of the rocker panel that we have a patch panel for from Spectra Premium. So that will be used. Uh, I will need to trim the edges of this as well. They, they cut this uh, with a plasma cutter and they make it oversized. So it's up to us to trim it down to make it fit. You can see the flange is pretty wide. I know it's hard to, hard to see it back, back under there, but it is pretty wide and it will need to be trimmed down to fit properly. So I'll get out the handy dandy cutoff wheel, the four and a half inch, and start cutting. You know, it's funny, when I see myself doing this sort of thing, I know that a lot of people will talk about they don't like to grind and they don't like to sand and they don't like to shape down uh, welds and that sort of thing. Even doing body work, that they find it uh, just a problem. You know, they just don't enjoy doing it. But I know for me, I actually get a lot of satisfaction out of not only the welding process, but even the grinding process because you can see the results as you move forward. And if there's something I need to fix, I can fix it and come back and grind that out. But I really enjoy you know, the welding aspect of it and I do like grinding down metal. I think it's, um, it's just kind of a relaxing thing for me to do.
So after using the surface conditioning tool, I'm following up with a little bit of a sanding disc and the 3M, what I call the finger wheel. Uh, it's a nylon or plastic um, piece that has little little like fingers sticking out of it that you can expose material and remove corrosion with. Also, I'm using Eastwood's Rust Encapsulator Plus here, and I found that I had to mix it up. I was surprised that the can itself was not dried out at all. Uh, I know when I've used Chassis Saver or Pour 15 that that stuff tends to dry out very quickly, and if you don't use it, you know, you have problems. So I'm just going to coat everything inside, and I even tried to get it down in the seam where that inner brace is. And I think this is a, a good thing to do to preserve this uh, rocker panel. So I'm close to installing the forward section of the rocker panel. And I have this hole punch gun, which I bought a couple years ago. Uh, this works great on thin sheet metal, but it doesn't work on like the rocker panel, the inner rocker. It's just too thick. So the nice part about this gun is it has a deep kind of throat to it, so you can set the depth that you want. Or you can just eyeball it and punch a hole. Really nice, 5 sixteenths. That's the size that I like. This should come out with a little laser <laughs> dot you can put in the center. Okay, you get the idea. Okay. It's been a pretty productive day. I have the inside of this forward piece painted with Rust-Oleum and I have all the holes ready to go. So that will get welded on right there. And then I have stripped down the outside of the rocker panel, not the upper part, but the hard part that would be uh, underneath. And then on the inside, of course, I have painted it with the rust encapsulator. So this will also go on. And all the measurements seem to line up where I need them. So I'm very happy with all the fitment. And I'm just mocking this up at the moment because I'm not ready to weld. I'm not ready to weld specifically. I want to weld this piece on by itself and then come back and put this piece on. Now, the thing is, you know, I've, I've put holes here in the top and those will get welded to this panel. Um, there are holes along this front edge and some of those were related to the uh, A-pillar structure. So that I'll probably weld those all in before I put the A-pillar piece back on. But as it is right now, everything fits the way it should. My measurements are all good. I even did some measuring to where I had taken, um, so I had measured from this edge to the nut location. So that's the same. And also compared both sides when I measured from this front edge to the corner. They both work out at 15 and a quarter. So that's good. Uh, everything seems to be right where I need it. So I'm going to take this back off and weld, well, leave this piece on and just weld it all in place.
So there it is. I didn't get quite as far as I wanted. I was hoping to have, you know, the driver's side side panel on top of this, but it's a short week. We got a long uh, weekend coming up for Labor Day, and I got done as much as I possibly could. So all of this is fully welded in. The pocket back here, this fits very nice for the wheelhouse. Everything is lining up like it should. Uh, I do have some grinding to do. I'll have to grind down these welds. And of course I'll go over these welds on this surface and all the ones on the inside as well as the ones I did. You can see them underneath. So nice and solid. I'm very happy with how everything fits. Measurements are good. And yeah, I'm happy with that. I also want to point out that this Arc Captain welder is getting the job done. You know, I, I did a video on this and I'm very happy with this welder. I know I've used other welders in the past. Those work just fine, but I'm really enjoying using this Arc welder, Arc Captain. So if you are interested in getting one of these, uh, there will be links in the description below. So you can get some uh, discount for that, and I get just a little percentage of whatever you happen to buy. Uh, I am happy with this helmet. I've been using this one, and they sent me another one. I just haven't had a chance to use it just yet. And other than this cart, which I got from Harbor Freight, which I'm really starting to hate, uh, I'm happy with that. <laughs> so that'll be it for this video. I hope you found something that can help you with your project. If nothing else, I hope you were entertained for the length of this video. Uh, I do want to thank you for watching. If you would, hit the thumbs up. Hit the bell notification as well. And leave a comment. Let me know what you think about this video. I also want to thank my patrons. Uh, without them, I don't know that I would continue making these videos, to be quite honest. Um, revenue on YouTube is not what it used to be, and it makes it difficult for me to continue making this sort of thing. But I will keep making videos, and uh, we'll see how, how things go in the future. Maybe YouTube will pick up as well, and um, we'll just have to wait and see. But again, thank you for watching, and hope you have a good Labor Day weekend. And until next time, take care of yourselves. See you.